more. Fortunately, there is a challenge in being able to, to get the video for the youth time this morning. So I will do something in, instead in its place. But we're happy to have you here. I know that some of us has experienced some rain this week and it has refreshed our yards and our bushes and our trees. And those of you who have flower beds and work diligently to take care of those and make sure that they are at their utmost, you probably noticed that the flowers and everything else have just seem to have a little bit more color to them this time. They seem to brighten up, liven up, I know I was looking out the back and looked at one of the trees in my backyard, and it seems like the limbs have kind of sprung up a little bit more, only because, as what I like to say is, they got that God water. <laughs> There's a difference between the water that comes out of our hoses and our sprinkler systems than that that is provided by God. So I hope that you have been refreshed there haven't been too much flooding in the area. I understand that we have some possibilities of some scattered showers through the rest of the weekend. But for the most part, it's going to be a great weekend. It's going to be a wonderful Labor Day. And with that being said, being Labor Day, we want to be sure and take a little time out on tomorrow when we have our festivities going and we maybe gather with family and a few friends. And be careful now. Try to keep it at least 10 or under. <laughs> but uh, remember that just like anything that we have celebrated over the years, which have become a, I guess you say, a mainstay for our country, that Labor Day was a day that was set aside for, for all those who have labored and the work that they had done to get it to the point that we have the lifestyle that we've been able to achieve. If many of you remember your history from school, there were plenty of times that kids as young as 10 years of age were working in the coal mines and that there was no such thing as going to school because you needed to be out in the fields and in the industries to work. That over the years, the wages were so low that people were having to work long hours, having to. Today, we tend to choose to work this overtime. But back then, they were working 16-hour and 18-hour days for mere pittance. Unions came in to be to help get safety in the workplace, better wages, better hours, benefits. So Labor Day should be remembered as a day of those who, who made the path a little easier for us today. So we want to remember and honor those who have made that sacrifice and made things possible for us. As to the life of what's taking place in your church, uh, this past week we did not have the, the uh, food pantry closed closet open. It'll be open this next week and we will have a close out as well. So those of you who have been participating with that, you will find that, that we uh, will have plenty to do on next Saturday because since we were not open this Saturday, I'm pretty sure there will be quite a few people to be around. So those of you who are participating with the program, we thank you and continue your support. We're uh, running a little shorthanded on our technical help this morning, but uh, Jay has looked like he's grown a couple of extra arms over there while he's trying to do things. And he also has an assistant this, with him this morning. So. Uh, it's going to be a little challenging for him and all the things he has to do this morning. So bear with us. If you catch a couple of glitches or if I wind up with some shades on today or a hat, you'll know that something didn't get filtered. <laughs> but uh, it is great to be with you. So as we come into this time, as we begin to take that deep cleansing breath, and prepare for our time of worship together. I ask that you, oh, one more thing. Remember today is Communion Sunday. I hope you have already gotten your items together for that. And we will do that at the conclusion of the sermon. 
Let us get our minds, our hearts, and our souls set to enjoy and be a part of our worship experience today. Jay? Please join in the call to worship. Sing praise to God who rescues us when we fall. Sing praise, praise to God, God who, who walks, walks with, with us on mm -hmm. all our journeys. Even though we fall, God lifts us and places us on paths of peace. Even though we stray, God finds us and brings us back to live of hope. Thanks be to God whose love is continually with us. Praise be to God whose mercy is all over us. Oh, amen. Amen. Please join in our opening prayer. We love to say, I may forgive, but I'll never forget. And we think we are truly following the ways of Christ. How blind we are, O oh Lord. Forgiveness means wiping the slate clean, not retaining the hurt. It works both ways letting ourselves make a decision for healing and reaching out to the one who has hurt us to offer forgiveness and redemption. None of us is perfect. We know that. But Jesus reminded us that love is the ruling component in lives of faithful living. Help us, O Lord, really receive the love that you have lavished upon us. Help us understand that love as an agent of forgiveness. As we bring before you the names of people and situations that are on our hearts, we seek your healing mercies and tender love for them. Remind us that the same mercy and love is continually offered for, to us. Though we falter and fail, though we seek and strive, be with us, gracious Lord, all of our days. Amen. Depth of mercy can there be mercy still reserved for me can my God his wrath me the chief of sinners spare i have long withstood his grace long provoked him to his face would not hearken to his calls grieved him by a thousand I my master have denied, I afresh have crucified, oft profaned his hallowed name, put him to an open shame. Therefore me the Savior stands, show his wounds and spread his hands. God is love, I know, I feel. Jesus weeps and loves me still. Now incline me to repent. Let me now my sins lament. Now my foul revolt deplore. Weep, believe, and sin no We come to a time in our worship experience to where we lift up and remember one another. 
and I pray and hope that you've had the opportunity to download the bulletin from today and you again have the names before you of those who are still on our sick and shut-in list and those that we need to lift up. I have a few names and a little more detail of some things from the phone calls this week. And I'd also like to apologize to a number of you because I did not get to you this week. Uh, things happen. <laughs> and uh, your pastor has things that happen as well. So I, I continue to try each week to get in touch with everyone. Some by phone, I actually talk to others by text, uh, maybe an email, but we try. And so please keep us in prayer as we attempt to keep all of us connected. I know that some of you have started calling and checking on members as well. And I applaud you and thank you for that. And please continue to do so. But from the calls that I've made this past week, there's a couple of things, well, a few things that I want to make sure that you're aware of. Uh, celebrations. We have the honor and privilege to be able to announce that Rick on yesterday reached a milestone of 62 years. So we want to wish Rick a happy birthday. And the follow-up to that is Rick is back in his apartment. He's at home, his home, his own home, his own room, his own, as they say, his recliner, <laughs> that he's able to enjoy that opportunity to be back in his home and uh, continued success as he moves forward in the challenges that he faced with his health. But 62 years of celebration was started on Saturday. Rick, you have a new year in your life. May it be a blessed one, and may you find that God still has plenty in store for you. On yesterday, uh, I had the Valerie and I had the privilege of being able to be in our first virtual celebration. Now, I think I remember announcing this a few weeks back that uh, our own Natasha Burks had... Uh, received her diploma already from her college. She finally has graduated from all the many hours of work online. She was doing online stuff intensely before all this turned out, but uh, she has completed her requirements for her Bachelor of Science degree. And on yesterday, there was a virtual celebration for her. Since we can't get together in our normal sense of celebrating nowadays, uh, a friend of hers put together a virtual celebration, and Valerie and I took part in that for just a little while on yesterday. So once again, congratulations, Natasha, and good luck as you move forward in what uh, God has planned in your life or what you have studied for. I want to let you know that uh, Jean Green is experiencing some challenges. Uh, Jean has had to have a lot of oral work done, and so uh, she's uh, kind of sore in mouth and not really talking much, and she says she's getting sick of soup. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we want to be sure and keep her in mind, those of us who have had to have some oral work done. Um, it's not fun, especially when you're having to have as much detail done as she's doing. Also, she has some hurt. And that hurt is that Jake, one of her beloved pets, Jake was attacked at the dog park a few days ago, so much so that he had to be taken to the vet and have some stitches and whatnot. And we all know that our little four-legged friends, whether it be cat, dog, whatever, they become a part of our family. And so she is just very concerned about Jake and his healing, and we ask that you keep Jean in prayer on those two accounts, the oral surgery and oral work that she's having done for replacement of her teeth, and also for Jake and the healing for him. Uh, many of you know our, our other beloved, Erica. Erica had to go into the hospital this past week, and but she's home now, and uh, I guess this is good news in the fact 
Not only is she out of the hospital and home, but she's also back to work. <laughs> um, Erica usually runs anywhere in the neighborhood about 80 hours a week and about six days a week of working. And so uh, we want to lift her up for continued strength and healing. She is recovering and doing better, but she did go ahead and go back to work because she says if she doesn't work, there's no money coming into the house. I talked with uh, Jessica Orth this week, this past week, excuse me, and um, they too have a four-legged family member who is not doing well. And so they're asking for prayers for their puppy as, as he tries to recoup and recover from his ailment, uh, so much so that they, they can't let him be real active, and he's a puppy. <laughs> All of us who've had a puppy in the house know that that's not a good deal, so prayers for them. Um, we have another celebration. Denise Alexander went home last weekend to spend a little time with her mother in New Orleans, and they were celebrating her 94th birthday. So we continue to celebrate with Denise and her family for a mother a matriarch who's at 94 years. I was talking with Denise. I said, boy, probably the stories she can tell that Denise says she can go all the way back to her childhood. So it's just wonderful to be able to sit around and talk with someone who can give us that kind of legacy and let us know what, how things have transpired and changed over the years and what they've seen, and we can learn from that. I want to lift this up in the standpoint of Labor Day. The uh, Allen Balls were, were traveling this past week, and uh, this weekend there's a lot of traveling going on because of the holiday. Uh, maybe not as much as normally takes place, but yet and still, people are traveling. So we ask for safe passage for all of those who are traveling, those who will be out in times of celebration as they remember what times we are in and be cognizant of that and that may all return safely to their homes, to their schools, whatever the case may be. And mentioning school, I'd like to just remind us that the school system, our children, parents alike, are all definitely in need of our prayers right now. I don't know how many of you had a chance to look at the paper this morning, but as glancing through, it was giving the details upon last spring about the number of kids who basically checked out and disconnected from the standpoint of the educational process and doing it online, the challenges that were still there for trying to get online, there are challenges now, even, with there not being enough hot spots or equipment for those to be able to be online for school. We know that a number of kids truly need to be in person for their learning. I, for one, would be one of those students because of my learning conditions doing everything and most of the things on the internet would not be a good deal for me. So I empathize with those students who need that personal one-on-one -on -one contact that they would have with a teacher and parents who have to work and can't be there for them or be there consistently for them. There are going to be challenges ahead. So we want to definitely be sure and keep the school system, the kids, and parents at all in our prayers as we continue this year and as we see how the month progress. They're talking about being able to bring some kids back into the school buildings. And we're just praying, praying for success and praying that those who are having challenges with getting their equipment to work, or even being able to get online, that those challenges be met. So, 
I know there were those of you who had things there at home that maybe you have lifted up this morning yourself in silence. Maybe you were even bold enough to say them out loud. But for all those prayers said both aloud and kept to ourselves, we say together, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Would you go with me in the spirit of prayer? Loving and merciful God, we come before you this day, fresh from a week which we have been challenged. Some of the challenges have, been caused, have caused us to worry and have strife. Other challenges brings us to a clear direction in our lives. In all of this, you are with us, bringing healing and peace for our lives. We have offered up names to you for those who are ill, who mourn, who feel lost, alienated, and wondering from anyone who cares about them if anyone cares about them. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord. Bring us to a healing mercy that all these people, all these names, all of those that in our hearts and in our voices might be heard. We also bring to you the loving God, the situations that stand of great joy, the celebrations that are also because of you. We have been in the midst during these trying times, and we know well that there are difficult times ahead. Hear our praises, O oh God. Bring your loving presence to all of us, all these people. We have named them. We have called them out in our hearts, by our voice, even in our thoughts. For this is the confidence of your unabiding love and the mercy that we offer this prayer. Amen. David. God forgave my sin in Jesus' name. I've been born again in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name I come to you To share his love as he told me to He said freely, freely You have received Freely, freely give Go with my name and because you believe, others will know that I live. All power is given in Jesus' name, in earth and heaven, in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name I come to you To share his power as he told me to He said freely, freely You have received name and be 
because you believe others will know that I live well I'm back at you uh, normally at this time on the first Sunday we would have the young disciples time and uh, like I say we're experiencing a few little difficulties today with our electronics and so we're not able to get what was prepared for you by the youth and Eddie so I'm going to stand in with a stead of relaying a story to you that probably would be used during this time that we would have for our youth if we were in in-person worship. It seems that two kids in the course of the school day had a falling out. And in the midst of that falling out, one of them was hurt pretty badly. Bad enough that parents had to be called and the one that was hurt had to go to the doctor and get things taken care of. And as the conversation continued in the nurse's office and the principal's office as to what was all the, I guess you say hubbub about in reference to the falling out that the two kids had had, one of the kids inadvertently told what was the truth. And the truth was that at home he had been told that a particular child had no business being in his school, that his family and those like him were not to be trusted, cared for, or loved. And so he took it upon himself because he had been taught this at home to make sure that the other young person's life was basically a living hell. On that particular day, the student who had been picked on and bullied finally decided he'd had enough and stood up for himself. And in the midst of standing for himself and the altercation taking place, he, the student who had been bullied so, wound up with a broken wrist. Fast forward, moving through the days to come, the students still had their differences and stayed their distance. The teacher kept a closer watch because she knew what the feeling was of the family and how the young man felt that had caused the commotion. But a few weeks down the road, something miraculous happened. While playing out on the playground, the student who had been the agitator was running around the base in a softball game that they were playing at P.E. and severely, severely twisted his ankle. He couldn't stand up. He couldn't walk. He was in great agony and pain. But one of the first kids to run to his aid was the kid that he had been bullying all the school year. And it wasn't a case that he wanted to stand over him and gloat. He kneeled down beside him and he said, are you okay? And with the disdain look, he looks up and see who's talking to him and he said, I just want to check and make sure you're okay. Still with the cast on his arm, he says, he says, I know it can hurt. He says, because 
I have a cast and it hurts. And I just want you to know that it'll be okay. And I want you to know that I forgave you. And he reached out his hand and helped the little boy up and helped him go back towards the school with the teachers and a few other kids around him and everybody's concerned. He hung his arm over his shoulder and, and helped him walk into the building and get to the nurse's office. And the exchange in the nurse's office just before the little boy walked out of the room, the one who was sitting there on the bench waiting for his parents to arrive so they could go to the hospital and see about his ankle. He looks up at him, he calls him by name, the kid turns back and looks at him. And he said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the way I have treated you. And I just don't believe what I was told anymore. How many times, how many times can one forgive? Is forgiveness something just thrown about as we easily say at times, I'm sorry? Without any meaning, without any deep thought, or because you got caught, or some of the stuff that was in the dark came to light and you apologize but the question still remains how many times can one forgive we'll hear today Jesus says a number of times and Maybe one of the things, I know I did it as a kid when I first read that and heard it was, that means I only have to forgive somebody 490 times. <laughs> well, if you're counting, you're not forgiving. As we heard earlier in the open prayer, not only do we have to forgive, we have to forget. So, for those of you who are youth and young folks that are out there in streaming land today, and for us older folks who are supposed to know better, let us realize God forgave us. He doesn't hold any grudges. He doesn't hold on to the baggage that you brought with you. He just truly and totally forgives and accepts you as you are on your own merit. May we be willing to do likewise for all and any that we meet. May you hear this prayer for our young ones. Gracious God, through your grace, through your love, through your forgiveness, we ask today that in all of our journeys, that like you, we might be able to offer grace, forgiveness, and most of all, love. Amen. David. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian 
in my heart in my heart in my heart Lord I want to be a Christian in my heart <clears throat> Lord I want to be like Jesus in my heart in my heart Lord I want to be like Jesus in my heart, in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. Our scripture reading today, Matthew 18, 21 through 35. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As, as many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. And... As he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all the debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Jay. We need to... Is it running? We need to remember those last few words of that scripture. If you're not willing to forgive your brother or sister in your heart, you know, truly you haven't forgiven. I want to lead into my sermon today that I have for you. And my title is will you forgive? And in the standpoint of forgiveness, 
there needs to be grace that is offered as well. And so I've got a lead in for you that comes to the grace part. You see, there was this driver who was, because how life goes, we all know what happened in the house. Things had not gone like it needed to in the morning and he got a late start for a very important meeting that he had to go to. And in the midst of going out and leaving that day to get where he needed to be, he decided that he might push the pedal a little further down than probably he should. And he was on a nice stretch of highway and he was really moving at a pretty good clip and all of a sudden off to the side of the road, here comes one of the police officers. And of course he pulls over knowing that, yeah, he was in the wrong and not only was he already gonna be late, he was gonna even be later now. But this was important. This is one of those situations where it could be a big deal for him. And as the driver sat there waiting for the officer to reach his door, he rolled down his window and the officer walks up. And before the officer goes say anything, the driver said, I'm sorry, I'm wrong, and I deserve my ticket. Then mercy kicked in. The officer said he wouldn't give the driver a ticket that they deserved, but he cautioned him that you needed to be careful going forward. Oh, great day in the morning. I, I, I got a reprieve. The driver said, I, I, I didn't get a ticket. I just got off with a warning. And the police officer went back to the car to finish up his various paperwork. He was the driver, was free to go. And as the driver got out back on the highway and he left, he figured to himself, you know, what's the chances that I'm going to run into another officer out here on the highway as I need to get where I'm going? So he pushed down on the accelerator a little bit more, trying to make up for the lost time. Now remember, he just had to experience grace and mercy. Just when he was about to top a hill, coming over the top of the hill, there sat another officer waiting for those who were driving faster than the posted limit. He got pulled over a second time. The officer approached the car. The driver was ready to get in the midst of his plea about you know, why he was driving fast and his need for being somewhere and as he explained the story to the officer, that the second officer that came up to the car, he was once again about to receive some mercy. It looked as if mercy was going to be offered one more time until the first officer rode up and saw who had been stopped. And all mercy was now out the window. God has a way of making justice catch up to us when we don't appreciate mercy or when mercy has been taken for granted. Would you go with me in the spirit of prayer? Lord, Enlighten what is dark in me. Strengthen what is weak in me. Mend what's broke in me. Bind what's bruised in me. 
heal what's sick in me. And lastly, revive whatever peace and love that has died in me. Amen. The question that Peter had for his master in our reading this morning was coming from chapter 18 it was about forgiveness. And because what the Jewish rabbis had been teaching, Peter wanted to find out what this new master, this, this new teacher, what he would say concerning forgiveness. You know, under the, the teachings and the, the preachings of the rabbis in the synagogues and stuff, they had been saying that forgiveness should be only extended three times. And Peter thought he was being generous with his question and his proposal of, should I only forgive seven times? Yeah, seven. He thought he was doing good. The teaching by the rabbis was three. He took it a step farther and said seven. However, Jesus throws a monkey wrench into the whole thing. And he says seven times seven, 70 times seven. Therefore, insisting that forgiveness has no limits. To help his followers see and understand about being prepared for forgiveness and how to do so, Jesus used the illustration of a king and his kingdom settling the accounts with his servants. A talent was a large sum of currency back then. A, ta a talent would be somewhere in the neighborhood of thousand dollars and it says that that this particular slave owed his master 10,000 talents 10,000 that was a phenomenal amount of money back then now you know that the master had to be somewhat gracious in the first place to let someone build up that amount of debt Which meant, which meant totally that the servant truly was in no position to pay back the full amount of his debt when the master had called for an accounting. Since there was no way for the servant to pay his debt, the rule and the custom of the time was that anyone who owed you debt and could not pay it, they could be put into what is called debtor's prison. Not only them, but his whole family. All your possessions would be sold and you would be in prison till the debt was paid. The owner had no way to raise that kind of money. He was concerned about his wife and his children and he knew that if everything they had, what little they had, if it was taken away, there was just no way for them to survive. So he did the only thing he could do. He threw, as the old saying goes, he threw himself on the mercy of the court, on the mercy of the king, and he begged and he pleaded, Master, Lord, please, give me another chance. I will pay you all that you owe, I owe you. Now, we've already learned what great sum this was. And in truth, there was probably no way, even without interest, that this man could have paid this debt off in any reasonable amount of time. It's kind of like 
the standpoint of the new car deals that they're making nowadays. 72 months. There are some car deals, and once again, if you've got excellent credit, you could go up to as much as 84 months on a car payment. 84 months. The thing about it is the, I guess, standard nowadays is 60 months, which is five years. And usually because of how they entice us and, and all the things that they do to cars and how technology has changed and the safety equipment on newer cars and everything, all the bells and whistles, by the time you get to your fourth year, 48 months, you're probably not wanting or not happy with your car anyway because there's a more beautiful, sexier model over here. And yet, you got 84 months, which means that you are upside down and there's no way for you to get a decent payoff and trade for the vehicle you now have. That's the condition that this particular slave was in. He was so far upside down that there was no way for him to make this payment. And his pleading and his begging, his crying, his weeping, his promises. And it tells us that the king had pity. The king looked at him and through the grace that he had to offer, raising a new standard of justice, told the servant that I forgive you of your debt. You are free to go. What? What, 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 what'd you say? I am going to show mercy and you're free to go. Now, probably in today's deal, rest, we would have probably jumped up and run out of the room. But he was offered mercy and forgiveness. And should have been overjoyed and excited because of a debt that he could not pay had totally been forgiven. And as he's going out into the streets, should be bouncing with joy and praising and giving thanks to the king who had forgave him, all of a sudden in his moment of, of glory, he looks and sees someone who owes him Maybe some chump change, especially compared to what he owed. It tells us in our story today that this particular slave owed him a few denarii. A denarii was a payment for a day's wages, which refers us back to the, again to our Lord's Prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. So basically, when you worked back then, you wanted to be able to get a day's wage so you could buy the things that you needed for the day. You didn't have to worry about tomorrow. You weren't looking for into the future. Give us this day our daily bread. And so approaching the person that owed him the money, he grabs him and he says, where's my money? Shocked, the person probably is going, whoa, 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 and somebody's got him by the throat, and he's squeezed and going, I need my money, and I want it now. J.G. Wentworth. But the one who was being accosted, he too fell to his knees and said, please forgive me. Give me a few more days. Give me another chance. I will pay what I owe you. Just please 
no more choking, no more harassing. Just give me a little while longer. And the one who had been relieved of his debt, the one out of all who should have been grateful and thankful, had no mercy to offer. And he declared, dragging the other slave before the magistrate, invoking the rules of the time, having him thrown in prison to pay his debt. Now, in that day and time in the marketplace, people see what's going on. The news was given from the middle of the courtyard. Other people are seeing this take place and go on. They already knew that the first slave had received such a great gift of forgiveness and were just astonished, taken back, enraged by the fact that this one, this one out of all who should have been willing to look past someone's debt had this fellow man thrown in prison. So someone ran to the king. They ran to the king and, and got an audience and told the king what had transpired outside in the marketplace. The king became enraged himself. And he sent for the man. And the man comes back in and who knows what kind of excuse, who knows what kind of posture he would have known, but probably before he can get a word out of his mouth, the king says to him, I forgave the total of your debt. Me, the king, who could take everything you had, I forgave you, but yet you couldn't forgive another servant. You couldn't forgive a few measly denarii and had his life basically ruined by throwing him in prison. So, the king tells him, for your transgression, I too now send you and basically your family to prison until your debt is paid. Can you imagine? Can you only imagine what it's like to have that, you know, 84-month note of yours forgiven on a car that maybe you have only had for four years? Can you imagine what it would be like to get a certified letter in the mail from your bank and you open it up and you read it and it tells you that your total note has been forgiven? you owe no more on the car that you purchased just four years ago. How relieved, how excited that you could be. Wouldn't it be nice to have that extra $650, $700 money back in your bank account every month? And that's what we find in this story today. That forgiveness that was offered was like putting money back into his account. Verse 35 tells us that these words, so also my heavenly Father will do to you unless you, unless every one of us forgives our brothers and sisters. then how can we call ourselves children of God who has canceled our sin and our debts? 
We cannot expect nor demand mercy when we ourselves are not willing to give. According to Jesus, we should offer forgiveness the same way, to the same degree that we desire from God. Why? Our debt to God is indefinitely greater than our debt to our brothers and sisters. Recognizing that that positions us to receive from God the very thing that we desire from others. So the question is, are you willing to forgive? Are you willing to show mercy to those who have wronged you, abused you, talked about you, even made your life difficult. And we find that challenging, especially in this day and time when we have to remember that somehow, some way, those who are seeking forgiveness may have, may, may have truly believed that they've done nothing wrong and that all the evidence says likewise. Are you willing to forgive? Are you willing to offer grace? Are you willing to stand with Christ, by Christ, and through Christ for the mercy and love and forgiveness that is appointed for all. And the people of God said, Amen. If you have your bulletin before you, or maybe a hymnal there at the house, we will move now to our time of Holy Communion. And yes, we are in strange times right now, and being able to do this streaming but yet and still, if we truly accept the fact that God is ever-present everywhere, this will be blessed. It will be honored. And we can go through this particular sacrament with a feeling of acceptance from our Lord on high. So as we open with our reading, Christ our Lord invites you to his table, all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and who seeks to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be the obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. And we have not loved our neighbor. And we have not heard the cries of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen.
as we move into the great Thanksgiving, I say to you, the Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty Father, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people here on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed be the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivering us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread and he gave thanks to you. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my cup of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your spirit on us gathered here and in this space and in our streaming context on these gifts of bread and wine that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may for the world be the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Pour out your spirit on us with Christ that we be one with one another and one with ministry to all the world until Christ comes again in the final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, with your holy church, all honor and glory is yours. Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Would you now go with me in the prayer that our Master taught us to pray? As we say together, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hopefully you have your bread and you have your cup. And on that night, Jesus was betrayed. 
but he had in the room with him all those he loved. And he took a thread and he gave thanks. And maybe his thanks were something similar to this. Father, through all that they have done or going to do, I give myself for them. May they be nourished. May they know the word will always be with them as I. And he broke the bread and he told all of them to eat. Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup and maybe he said this type of blessing. Father, bless this cup that all who may partake in it may find that their love, grace, and forgiveness is always available to them. And he told them to drink. So, at this time, I asked you to take your bread and then drink from your cup. And realize and know that you too are a part of the body of Christ. And because of what he did, we are able to walk through this life if we so choose to offer the same type of grace, love, and forgiveness as he. The question is, will you forgive? Would you Hear this prayer after the communion. Eternal God, we give thanks to you for this holy mystery in which you have given of yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves to others. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It's been another great week, and I understand that we have some wonderful fall weather to show up early this coming week. But most of all, what we have again is an opportunity to be the example of what Christ calls us to be. As we depart from our time together today, from this streaming space of worship, may we find that when you're out, the stranger that you meet now becomes a friend. And may that friend that you make receive the grace and forgiveness that is offered. And may we all remember that God loves us, each and every one. Laura. God be with you.